I'm Lacey Perbatecki. This is my garage. Um, Kevin Leckie and I thought up Constellation because Non Solo was coming through town on tour and we wanted something fun to happen in the neighborhood because South Minneapolis is awesome. I'm Kevin Leckie and I made this circle of benches and there's a, a book I made as well that you can read and I'm also one of the organizers of the Constellation event which um, it kind of came together just because a couple of us were looking for a place to do an art show and thinking about being interested in non-gallery spaces to work in and then we realized we could use our garages and that might be pretty fun um, and then we figured it was a good enough idea to try to get some of our other friends in the neighborhood who all do creative stuff to get involved as well and the project sort of mushroomed from there as more people um, got involved. So we got 14 people, well 14 spaces, more people in each space to open up their private spaces, garages, backyards, porches, I don't know what else, maybe a balcony, a tree, to do creative things. <laughs> My name is Peter Hogan Thompson. I'm going to be Phillips West's unofficial official artist in residence over the summer. And this is kind of my inaugural event participating in Constellation. So this weekend we're making signs um, and kind of like signs for the neighborhood, like things that maybe you want to point out or see different. Or um, this is one, there's an empty lot kind of over on Fifth Avenue there that I want to have as a park. So I'm going to put this sign up there that just says this is a park so maybe people start thinking of it that way um, and then this is the shanty so this is an art shanty which uh, are normally on um, Medicine Lake uh, in the winter time um, but I've set it up here in my front yard and I've got a bunch of sign making materials over here these are some of the signs some of the signs that people have made uh, yesterday Yeah, mine has got music. Not that I'm bragging it up. I don't know the judges here yet. Not that I'm bragging it up. And uh, I decided to make a riverboat cake. A uh, river with a riverboat. Houseboat, sorry. Mostly I think I did it because I have like big fantasies of living in really small places. Like I want to live in a little tiny camper or a little houseboat all by myself without small children around me, which I have. <laughs> so I sort of lived out my fantasy here. But I couldn't find a person that was the right scale, so I decided the person had gone missing. And the goat luckily had some food from the garden to eat. And I had this idea of these of this ex, these two things jutting out, and I have to say that I lost control of the cake, and so it became a cake making experience that turned into sort of a German expressionist Anselm Kiefer like cake experience. Yeah, I made this cake. It's um, a pink truck. It's the first cake I've ever made that was a three dimensional cake, so it's very exciting. If you'll notice, there's um, headlights and tail lights, as well as windshield wipers that seem to have um, fallen off in the, the driveway. I am busy with doing a commission for Children's Hospital, and I just finished a robin and a nest, and then a robin started building a nest at my house, so I went, well, this is the year of the robin nest. So that's my three successful eggs, and this one I think must have been a bad egg. Because it didn't make it, did it? So this is my robin nest cake. And I made a fish because I always wonder why fish are so artistic. And I saw many at Art of World, so I was inspired. Fish on a platter. David and little Debbie riding in the car. The car is called Little Debbie's Pool House Dream. David's garage is called the Pool House. It doesn't have its whole roof. There's a big square hole in the roof. Therefore, someone left my car out in the rain is the second title of my cake. It's made out of Little Debbie cakes, hence the Little Debbie um, Just so you all know, everyone that might not know, there's a, um, at four o'clock, there's going to be a cake walk with Kat Corrigan and Dwayne Tugas. 
and they're going to raise money for the North um, Side Tornado Recovery. Um, and that's at 4 o'clock. So come and win a cake. Okay, a, a cakewalk, it's a lot like life. You know, there's this mad rush to be holding a cake when the music <laughs> stops, but most people do not get a cake. Very few You're people for take trash? the cake. Where do I start? What can you say about a 25 year old girl that died? Oh, wait, do we have to kiss? <laughs> oh, oh, we do a stage kiss. We're going to put your belt up. You put your belt up, yeah. I mean, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Take you, Jennifer Cavallari, to be my wedded wife from this day forward, to love and to cherish till death do us part. Ariella Mosca, Stephanie Molstead, Jessica Chamberlain, Emily Tate, Nicola Collar. We are Shoe Fly Ariel Collective. <laughs> and for a number of years since I moved here in 2000, we've had problems with graffiti in the alleys and sort of around here and a group of neighbors and I have tried for quite a few years to get something particularly on the back of Acme, which I walk out and look at every day. And um, didn't happen, didn't happen, and finally I, I knew Rich, and he, he had done some wall, indoor wall paintings from this bromide series of his that you'll hear more from him. Um, and I sort of got a sense that the owner, who's a little bit conservative, traditional, didn't want a political statement or anything too bright that he might go for this idea. And through PP&A, we got a little bit of Clean City uh, Minneapolis grant money and did it in 2009. Uh, I'm now working on my second mural here on the Acme Awning Building. Um, I got a grant recently through the city of Minneapolis, a Clean City Minneapolis Graffiti Abatement Grant. Uh, the idea is that if we paint murals on walls, that dissuades people from tagging them with graffiti. Uh, this building has been tagged repeatedly for 15, 20 years, and uh, so the hopes is that we'll get that to stop. Uh, I did a, a mural on the back wall of the building two years ago, which has is still yet to be tagged. For the new mural, we're going to be working in a similar style, except on this copper instead of a silver background, and working from uh, an image I put together of a historical photograph of Powderhorn Park, a mock-up of it. A zine is a self-published, handmade magazine, is the simplest, usually done in a small circulation, small print run, and um, usually very cheaply sold or for trade or a lot of people just leave them places. This is a zine about herbal first aid. A lot of them tend to be about do-it-yourself kind of grassroots like information that wouldn't normally be published in mainstream media. And 
then we have a collection of 1600 that are some on permanent collection in the garage called the Zine Apothecary. And a lot of them are going on the road with Debbie in the uh, Flyway Zine Mobile, which are going on tour all over the country. We're always looking for donations to our zine libraries, and this was the first um, zine that was donated just a few days ago from a teacher in New York City who writes zines specifically about um, haiku in, haiku about nature in Central Park, New York City is, is what she tends to write about. And so, um, and she just donated this and we're always looking for donations of other zines if people want to um, see their pr collections preserved and shared. We are very happy to take them in. Right here we have the Forgiveness Truth. Wonder Hearts, form of forgiveness, shape of compassion. Activate. I really appreciated this. I already forgave um, one person, which is lovely. Um, and I, yeah, I think this is a really a beautiful idea. Oh, somebody's in there right now. Uh, would you care to come to the forgiveness booth with me? This is, um, seems like a private ritual, but please join me. Um, and again, this is not my ingenious creation. I'm merely a participant and a really appreciative participant at that. And yeah, in here there are a bunch of um, little forms that allow one to sort of work through um, the process of forgiving. So I'm going to write something down here. Let's see. Okay. So I, I filled out this form and it has helped me work through my intentions for this forgiveness. And um, these scissors are amazing, obviously, and retain the secretive qualities of my personal forgiveness. And a lot of people have done a lot of forgiving, as you can see in here. So I was especially drawn to this booth, and I'm really impressed that they created this. Um, when you're done, please enjoy baklava. Which are, they're so adorable, you just don't even want to eat them. But this is my second one, so there's that. I encourage everyone to come down here and enjoy this beautiful experience. This is one of many things happening in this wonderful yard. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we formed at the end of last year, and I think initially started as a, as a way to sort of just support each other as artists and then after kind of working together and showing together we hatched a plan to go on a kind of road trip tour. Um, so we're, um, we're traveling, leaving from New York, um, stopping here and then any place that would offer us space to show we accepted and we're making site specific shows for every location that offered us a uh, chance to do something. So we're showing um, in, well here, in Lacey's garage. Lacey's a good friend of mine. Um, and then we're heading out to Sacramento um, and going up and down in different traditional and non-traditional art venues and cafes. And yeah. So like Margaret's mom and dad live in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan and we all were there um, the second day of our tour. Yeah. And then Margaret took us out to some of the climbed in and we're taking pictures and exploring and then we found some of the house was filled with a lot of old clothing and things and so we decided we'd like to take some and clean them up and wear them at the opening. And the lady really likes midnight blue. Yeah, um, so intersecting my own work with the artsy hobby craft exhibition here as part of Constellation, uh, I've decided to build a scale model of the USS Enterprise, which was the aircraft carrier that my father served on in Vietnam and um, that my parents actually met on, so it's kind of a strange symbol of my own existence. Set up a nice little workstation with a, a 
little camera that kind of gives a projected image of the model building process. And we're going to be printing all weekend, uh, and people can uh, bring in clothing that we can print on, there are t-shirts on the table as well. I'm working on a series of my own, uh, screen print and gouache, small editions, and um, we just have very basic, minimal setup here, it's just exactly what we need. I'm working a lot with uh, film and television imagery, and it is in part critical of media. And so this is a, the end title from a film, and I'm using a gouache background, to, which I found works well with these because I'm able to pull a human quality from the brush strokes and a photographic quality from the, the film stills. These are my paintings. Um, the most recent, they're kind of horrifying. Uh, the middle one, um, especially because it's hard to think about. It, it, it scared me, and that was really exciting. Whenever a painting scares me, that's when I know that I did something. Um, I'm still thinking about what that means. <laughs> Stuff that I have right here, these are what I'm making. Our show is called Arts and Hobby Craft, and I'm making um, these little phone cases. I still need to get snaps for them, but they're about the size of like a true. Um, some of them are like for, you know, I phone, others for smaller cases, iPods, etc. And I'll be making those all weekend and selling them on our merch table at this show. For this show today, I was thinking about what I'd like to make to put into the garage. And these are mugs that I made. They're um, taken from molds that I ordered off of eBay. Uh, a lot of my work deals with intimacy and relationship. And I was kind of interested in the idea of exchange and then also um, recreating, like using an old mold, an abandoned mold, and then recreating it and kind of giving it a handmade quality. Um, and and so for this show, um, I'm offering um, coffee for people to use the mugs and drink out of them. And then I have a bunch up here, and there's a little coffee station over there. And a friend of mine in New York wrote a little paragraph about um, about them so people can read it while they drink it. Hi, my name is Juana, and I'm here enjoying a lot of different things that different artists have made. One of the things that I just got was this beautiful mug that has the Minnesota map, and it has some little thing inside with a beautiful unicorn in here. And I love it because I've been living here in the Twin Cities for five years already, and I'm moving out soon. So I think this is a perfect trait for me to take home. This is French. I'm not very good at reading it. Are you good at reading French? It's a no. <laughs> very cool. It's almost like standing in an actual like picture of a magazine. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like. Like the colors and the, and the whole like bareness of it too. Alright. So my name is Zaid Ali and we came here for Art Constellation and I really liked it because it's very minimal and I had, I'm going to borrow Katie's phrase, a very like 40s glam style to it. So I think it left enough space for you to imagine what it would be like almost living there. And I'm actually going to try to find out if the room is available for rent. And I want to keep it as is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Pete Dreesen. I'm a visual artist and painter and mixed media artist. And this is the Delirious Drone Fleet. 
So it's kind of uh, about the story of a young wayward drone who doesn't want to be a bad drone. He wants to get away from his uh, military and, control. Uh, so it's kind of like the story of Candide where he goes out, has uh, all these adventures and um, wants to have a, a probably a little more peaceful, more feminine life and, and uh, go out and seek and have a good time. It's kind of like a little sculpture garden. We have the mothership that goes along with the fleet of uh, 26 other ships. And so it's temporarily moored and I'm changing the shape of it throughout the uh, constellation throughout the weekend. So tonight I'm going to change it for tomorrow and put the sail up. And um, so and then there's a scenic overlook up there. We do a lot of work, my wife and I, who actually isn't here, but uh, we do a lot of work that brings people together to um, meet each other and to interact with other ideas and other people, And um, but we rarely get to really get to know them. So we just wanted to do something kind of laid back and fun and have people over in our living room and actually just get to talk with them a little bit. And so we're asking people for their stories of how they got here. And it can be literally we were walking around and we saw the sign and we came up, or it could be this is how I got to where I am in my life. Uh, right now, so people can interpret it however they want. And these guys actually just had a great conversation with them, and um, I'm making a postcard for everybody who shares the story. Um, and so, so there's the postcard that I just made. I'm interpreting that. <laughs> My name is Cole Harry Winfield. I'm an emerging printmaker here in Minneapolis, and um, this is a piece that I made last year called uh, "There's Less Time Than Place." It's a woodblock print and screen print, um, which was used as a as part of this uh, printmaking portfolio exchange that happened between Minneapolis artists and Brazilian artists. Um, so this is a contemplation of a lot of different spaces I've traveled to and. Um, the colored areas are screen printed and the deep blue black is, uh, is wood. It's actually particle board. Um, I've been printmaking here for four or five years. I, I studied at the University of Minnesota and at a couple of universities in Brazil. And uh, right now we're launching a new emerging printmaking studio called Recess Press Collective. Um, and I'm very excited about this summer and doing more We call projects. this the Postcard Book Swap Project, and we do have a Facebook page to organize it, and our Facebook page theme is it's fun to get cool things in the mail, but everybody's kind of broke, so um, we did postcards. We did page-by-page uh, -page postcards, and this is by a woman named Teresa who lives in Pulaski, Wisconsin, and she sent me six postcards with a story on the back about her hometown, and she made all the postcards. And then I made uh, what's called a blizzard binding, which is a folded origami binding invented by Hetty Kyle to hold the cards. This is by Ann Drivas, who lives in St. Paul. And she did the same thing. And they each have a set of postcards from me. And so we're going to get together and bind all of the postcards. We had about two dozen participants uh, between the Austin Book Workers and the Twin Cities Visual Journal Collective. And so we're going to have a book binding party on each side. This is a piece that I call The House. Um, this piece actually evolved over about 10 years and it has uh, materials from about three different states in it, uh, three states that I lived over a 10 year period. Uh, there's stuff on the top porch, the earthen materials that are from North Dakota. There's uh, these shell casings, these 22 shell casings are actually from the woods of Oregon. And a lot of the other pieces are from Texas. Lots of other materials just collected off of the ground. Pottery, there's a tube, that kind of thing. There's even bones, some chicken bones, it's a small animal skull, and uh, that seed pod right there is really earplug because, you know, that's something that I've used in construction work. Uh, and the, the parts of the ant that are uh, glazed on the top of the earplug um, that ant was actually removed from the back of my throat. 
coworker, my cousin, with a needle nose pliers because in the middle of the job, I noticed that like I was having a hard time swallowing the knife. <laughs> and it's there now. And I'm going to read you a love poem in Spanish. Poema de amor para Isaías. A veces, aunque estando juntos, el amor es un vacío no llenable entre los dos que juntos están separados y separados están juntos siempre con lo que comparten. La profunda alegría y terrible tristeza comprendiendo que existes conmigo pero que no puedo acompañarte a los extremos oscuros donde enfrentarás la muerte solo. Yo sé que eres una multiplicidad de belleza lo veo en tu cara, que es un río, porque siempre fluye a las múltiples encarnaciones de vida a un otro, como un fuente de amor que tomo tan desesperadamente que me sorprenda, me avergüenza, pero me reconozco en la vida que me das con tu amor. Cuando dos se entran, profundamente en un espacio intangible en el otro. Sus límites se vuelven hule y ya están metidos en un baile hermoso de definir sí mismos y su amor. Good whiskey.